Hey guys, I'm here with hobby legend Ken Golden, and we're about to get an inside look at his personal collection. You ready? Let's do it. Absolutely. What an office. Thank you. Yeah, this is incredible. I see so much that I want to ask you about. But I got to start over here because I see a young Ken Golden. Look at this. Look young at these. Hev young I heavier with big glasses. I see <laughs> <laughs> young Ken Golden, young Shaq there. So tell me, I, you've obviously been in the memorabilia world and in the sports mm -hmm. card world for a very long time. Yep. Back to the early days of Shaquille O'Neal and even before, right? Correct. How did this all get started for you? Well, I mean, I was collecting cards as a kid. Uh, made my first deal when I was 13 years old. It was before price guides, before the internet, before, before cell phones, and um, found a way to sell them. Discovered uh, Sports Collectors Digest and the Trader Speaks and started buying and selling. And then uh, when I was 19, and my dad says to me, hey, you know, you think there could be a big business in this? I said, sure. He goes, okay, I'm gonna try to raise money and start a public company. And I said, okay, there's no way that's gonna happen. But he raised money, started the public company, and we, we started Scoreboard. And um, the big move, the two big things that happened is number one, signing athletes exclusively to sign autographs and sell their product on TV. But even more important was in 1990, I got the idea to uh, make draft pick cards because I couldn't get a league license, you know? So I said, what people really care about is the rookies. So what if I signed all the rookies to individual licenses mm -hmm. instead and put out a set before anybody else made cards of them? And that's how Classic Draft Picks was born. And I ended up meeting and signing all of the greatest athletes in the world from 1991 to 1997. So fast forward to yep. 2012. Yes. So about 10 years ago, you, you started Golden Auctions. Correct. So, and, and that's then led to you having such an incredible warehouse and office full of amazing things. What, what was the impetus for starting that? So one day I was bidding at an auction for SCP and uh, they were selling a Babe Ruth jersey. And that jersey went for $4.4 .4 million. And I did math in my head. And I said, boy, that guy may have just made $900,000 on one item. Um, at the same time, you know, there were trouble with some of the auction houses. Master was the biggest, and there was legal problems that were brewing there. So I said, this might be a good time to get into the auction business and use all of my contacts and you know, do it the right way. Vet your bidders, guarantee authenticity of everything you sold, and that's how Golden uh, was born. Awesome, incredible. Well, also incredible is this stuff that I see everywhere in your <laughs> office. So you buy and sell stuff all the time, yep. but then you also have your personal collection, all of these things that you've collected over the years. These bats struck me right when I walked into your office. Tell me about some of these bats. Sure, I collect 500 home run club bats. I okay. try to get actual home run bats. Now, so do you have the entire 500 home run club or I have are you missing the, any? I have the entire 500 wow. run club, yes. Incredible. I've got Mel Ott, I've got yeah. Babe Ruth, I've got Jimmy Fox, I've got everybody. Wow, that's absolutely amazing. That is really, really cool. What a collection. Also, Ken, mm -hmm. this drew me over here yep. because I love sealed wax. You've got some incredible ones here. Show these to me. This is 1972-73, uh, Julius Irving rookie year. So yeah, I mean, I go try and go back. I try and get complete runs, and then I try and stockpile what I think are really good ones. So you love collecting the boxes from the incredible rookie class. That's right? what I go for. That's what makes, I gravitate towards. It makes towards. a ton yep. of sense. It takes a ton of sense. And speaking of boxes, Talk to us about this and what this experience was like. This is a copy, somebody got it for me, of the break that Drake and I did. That was incredible. Yep. That was incredible. Right, anything from this wall, Ken? There's so, a lot of interesting stuff up here. Um, I collect, besides vintage cards, I collect vintage boxes. So my goal is to get a Topps and Bowman box from like every issue from the 50s, 60s. Wow. Um, it makes a nice display. I like really old cards. I think that the old cards had such a meaning art. So this is like one of the sets that I collect. I collect. It's T3. Mm -hmm. This is a Tris speaker. This is an original advertising display sign that they hung out in stores when the 1933 wow. Gaudi came out. Such an iconic set. Yep, with the four Babe Ruths. Awesome. This is incredible. I know you brought some of your best personal pieces from your home. Yes. And I want to see these. Okay. So can we go next door sure, and take a look? Awesome. We can even get to the World Series trophies. All right, Ken, so it looks like you got seven 
big items here out. I'm excited to see these. Uh, where do you want to start? You know, I like, I, again, I try and collect things where you have got can get an iconic card inside. Uh -huh. So this is a 1979 um, oh, wow. OPG. Oh, wow. So with, that's the Gretzky. That's the Gretzky. The so Gretzky. The holy grail the of, all, of all hockey cards. Wow. So that's an unopened box. Unbelievable. This is an unopened box of 1980-81 basketball with uh, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson rookie, which they smartly put that right on the cover. They yes. knew that would be the big card. <laughs> they knew that was going to be big. <laughs> I brought some game used items. Okay. And we're getting the gloves on. So yeah. this is getting serious yeah. now. So, so here we have... This is a game used bat from Babe Ruth. Wow. Used in the 1927 baseball season. Wow. Of course, his 60 home run season. Right. And this is the only Babe Ruth bat in existence that comes with provenance from Claire Ruth. Wow. So Claire Ruth saved this bat and uh, said that Babe saved it because it was used during his favorite season, 1927. And as you would imagine, it is PSA certified wow. as a PSA. DNA game used. Wow, tin. incredible. So, Babe Ruth game used. Now, wow. this is not the most expensive bat in my collection, but possibly the most unique because of the circumstances. This is a Jim Bridewiser bat. Okay. Who, who was a member, uh, you know, a, a journeyman for the New York Yankees right. in 1951. Right. However, in 1951, there was a young rookie that was called up to play for the Yankees. Mickey Mantle. Mickey Mantle, yes. who did not have his own bat at the time. <laughs> so Mickey Mantle borrowed Jim Bridewiser's bat. And take a look at that signature. Wow. That is a signature that you've not seen since the early 50s because that was his first signature. Before so he was used to signing a bunch of exactly, stuff. Exactly. Before he came up with those loops uh -huh. that looked like bananas. Uh -huh. um, so this is a rookie game used and signed wow. Mickey Mantle bat from 1951. This is a 1956 wow. game used Atlanta Braves wow. Hank Aaron jersey. Wow. And there you see signed the as number well. 44 in the back. Incredible. So wow. That, that is really wild. Uh, that is probably the single toughest jersey I have in my collection. And then we have, I love this one, because this is, it's impossible to get jerseys of these old timers that are photo matched. This was photo matched to about 40 games in the 1969 season, one of Hank Aaron's best seasons of his career. He had over 40 home runs. And I love the fact, because you have the 100th anniversary of baseball patch. So this is a photo matched Hank Aaron to, he hit about 15 home runs in this jersey. Wow. So now here, again, Willie Mays. What's cool about this one, so Willie Mays, of course, New York Giant, and then yep. San Francisco Giant. Yep. Um, towards the end of his career in 72, the Mets were getting pretty good, and the Giants were horrible, and Willie wanted to go back to New York. So they traded Willie Mays to the Mets. Mm -hmm. When he went back to New York, they, you know, he played in his first game in Sports Illustrated, took a picture of him, and, you know, for his first game, you know, now back in New York. This is the jersey, photo matched, uh, that Willie Mays m wore in his first ever game as the New York Mets. Unbelievable. Yeah. That's really, really cool. Ken, this has been incredible that you've shared all this with us. It's awesome seeing the personal collection of a legend in the sports <laughs> memorabilia space. And I'm going to take you up on your offer someday yep. to walk through your house and see even more of this. Absolutely. Appreciate it, Ken. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks a lot. Yep. Thanks, you guys, for watching. We'll see you again soon with our next episode.